Greetings, viewers. Natalia like here bringing you a commentary. That is sure to get me called a hypocrite given my last video. So Disney put out a trailer for their latest X-Men cartoon and announced that the shape-shifting character Morph is going to be non-binary. <laughs> As you can imagine, pissed off the entire anti woke community, who just had to scream out, X Men was never woke, and that this was clearly pushing some sort of agenda on everyone, even though A, it's not, and B, X Men has always had progressive commentary. Mutants was seen as an allegory for marginalized communities like the LGBT, but that didn't stop people who probably only remember the X Men as superheroes fighting on Twitter, starting an uproar and proving that they know nothing about the franchise. Oh yeah, people also made a real big issue about how Rogue no longer has an ass, too. How dare this cartoon aimed at children not sexualize one of the female characters so us, the adult male audience, will have a reason to watch and be gross. The funny thing is that this image is just a close-up of a screen cap in the trailer. Yeah, I can see why like, Rogue not being caked up was way more worthy of people's attention than the literal giant killer robot. Truly, people like Tyro Magnus and Film Overload have their priorities straight. The video I'm going to be looking at today, however, is from The Quartering. Disney destroys yet another beloved classic. This time, it's X-Men 97. As the show has been relaunched on Disney, we have already seen several. Very concerning. Updated for modern audiences. Change to the show. This is a show that was iconic when I grew up. A show that was absolutely, probably the most memorable of my youth. Disney was reimagining it, so you just knew it was going to go just complete garbage. The trailer even looked pretty good. Um, but now we've got the Disney Plus series. Well, and this is just the first of many. We'll be portraying one of the characters as non-binary. And also they have uh, done something absolutely unforgivable to Rogue. Um, you know, removing entirely any of her feminine features. <laughs> I laughed the first time you said that, and I still laugh. Yes, the ass is such a feminine feature. Can't have a woman that isn't all caked up for the neck beards now, can we? Honestly, this is pretty much par for the course where the quartering is concerned, as he usually has something to say whenever a female character appears in the form of media. His first video on she and the Princesses of Power was spent bemoaning on how he felt she and Adam looked like, and I quote, an androgynous boy. He also jumped on the back wagon of crying that Nota Bunny had had her breasts reduced. We weren't even that big to begin with, so why were you all bitching? And called to attention April Dia the Mute Mayhem being overweight and black for some reason. Boo hoo, we don't get an April O'Neil with big breasts anymore, who cares? <laughs> and really? Disney ruined X Men for ya? Guess they announced that a character is going to be non binary and didn't sexualize Rogue? Good lord. Uh, one of the most powerful tools she used to get close to people was a part of her, you know, her her character. Okay, I know that rogue in the 1992 cartoon and that sultry accent and called everyone sugar. So I note, I should never say sugar again. I am far too white to pull it off. Did she really use her sexual appeal to get close to an enemy so she could touch them and absorb their power? Did some research and the only times I could find Rogue flirting was with Spider-Man during his crossover with their cartoon. And with Gambit and... <laughs> oh, this is gonna kill ya. I remember that being more trying to incapacitate Gambit after he became one of Mr. Sinister's henchmen. Gambit was fooled into thinking that Rogue wanted to kiss him, and when he did, he blacked out. Cause you know, that's what happens when someone makes skin on skin contact with Rogue. Also, it's usually Gambit that initiates the flirting with Rogue, and she often rejects him. I don't even care anymore. Which is why you made a video about it instead of bitching about it on Twitter like everybody else. Can't go with it without making a rage baby video now, can't we? So, after lying about wokeness, Warring Shields this video is sponsor. Normally I'd skip this, but there's something that I really want to point out here. Blocks. It comes in extremely important all the time. That's why I have it on my computers, laptops, and mobile phones. Private internet access is an open source app with no usage logs, unlimited bandwidth, high speed global server network, dedicated apps, powerful encryption, and 24 seven live support. Unlock the power of the internet and stay censorship free by using my link in the description below and get yourself Yes, you really did just call off his sponsor ad in this video. You'd love to see it. 1990s Rogue. You may notice a very caked up individual. New Rogue. She went from, uh, a, she went to a negative rear end. It is concave. She went to, she went from, uh, 
uh, a big booty, beautiful booty to uh, Hank Hill. Now, I admit, you know, this particular angle isn't exactly how every little aspect of the original cartoon was. <laughs> then why are you and others so upset about it, you big fat babies? But these are the people, they wanted it. So remember that this is Disney. It's over. Morph's characterization in X-Men 97. Cool, let's see. Quote, this is a lighter take on the character who is non-binary and has an interesting buddy relationship with Wolverine. You mean gay? No. I get that Disney tried to force gay representation before with the foo, but there's nothing to suggest that they'll do that here. Unless you're referring to what I think you're referring to, but I'll get to that in my next interjection. That's what they're, they're gonna, they're gonna be gay baiting, I guarantee it. So I did some research to see if there were any gay Marvel characters, and I came across information on a comic where Wolverine goes on an adventure with Marvel's HERCULES! <laughs> and enters a same-sex relationship with him. <laughs> and no, I don't care if it's an Elseworlds story. Does it take anything away from Wolverine? I don't think so. Wolverine is still one of my favorite X-Men. Now I know what you're gonna say. In the comics and cartoon, Wolverine's attracted to Jean Grey and in a love triangle with Cyclops. And to that I say, yeah, uh, that doesn't rule out the possibility that Wolverine could be bisexual or pansexual. Do I think they're gonna go the route of making Wolverine and more for a same-sex couple? I really don't think so. The characters passed with Mr. Sinister, the show's villain, could also come into play. Let's look at some of the replies. Oh, they locked him down. Gee, I wonder why. Could it be because a bunch of angry conservatives and basement dwellers will be giving them grief over this or anything? Anyways, that's all I wanted to cover. Final thoughts. anti woke channels are really just a bunch of grifters that are gonna die off eventually, especially the quartering who doesn't have the charisma to hold people's interest outside of his clickbait videos and given his dull personality. This is Dr. Dice saying thanks for watching and please share your thoughts with me.